what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology and today we will start with the discussion on monthly horoscopes i will try my best to put forward what are the planetary placements every month and how the dynamics are changing and based on the prominent signs where most of the planets will be we have to check the particular house in the horoscope and that will be affected now before beginning god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him even in the transits <laughs> now the planets like saturn they stay in a sign for roughly two and a half to three years and planets like jupiter stay for roughly 13 months and the planet rahu and the planet Ketu, they will also stay for 18 months, roughly one and a half years. That means once these three planets, uh, these four planets have changed signs, they will not impact the people on a monthly level. Okay, when I say monthly level, I mean, I don't mean to say that they will not impact you. They will be the one who will impact you the most, but you will not be able to feel it on a monthly basis because they don't change signs monthly all right therefore we have to focus on the remaining planets now among the other planets we cannot focus on moon because moon is changing sign every two two and a half days so that means which are the planets that are going to make a difference monthly it is sun it is mercury venus and mars yes sun mars mercury venus these are the planets which will make a difference monthly where the focal areas will change and as you all know sun changes one sign in the 15th of every month so for example now it is today's first of october that means in 15th of october it will change its sign now it does not mean it will exactly change on 15th this year it is changing on 17th 17th morning roughly so till 16th it will be in the sign of Virgo and then it will go on to Libra till November 15th again November 15th means November 16th maybe but roughly 15th is the date in the mid of the month the sign is changed by Sun and then Mercury needs around 20 days to move one sign because it's a very fast moving planet and Venus also needs around 25 days to go around one sign roughly and Mars takes around one and a half to two months depending on other issues now we have to see where these planets are positive okay which zodiac signs are they impacting by that we will know which area of the horoscope is getting affected so for example now today sun mercury are conjunct in the sign of virgo mercury is exalted and on 15th or on 17th both of them will be in the sign of libra it will be conjunct with jupiter because remember jupiter is already in libra okay i will first tell about the planetary placements then i will speak of the overall scenario and mars venus they are currently in the sign of leo they are in 17 and 20 degrees roughly i guess and by within the next 15 days they will also not 15 days around 10 12 days they will also enter the sign of virgo okay and they will be leaving leo and by the end of this month which is october 25th the planet saturn is also changing sign from scorpio to sagittarius well saturn had already moved into sagittarius on 26th january this year but it came back later in june june august and then it august 25th it started moving forward that means saturn is going to stay for two 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 and a half years now in the sign of sagittarius after october 25th okay now if we take the motion of the planets the fast moving planets we have to take sun mars mercury venus 
so now and you have the new moons and full moons also okay so for example the new moon is uh, the new moon just happened some days back and the full moon is happening on 5th I guess 5th October there is a full moon and the full moon is happening for the sun will be in the sign of Virgo and moon will be in the sign of Pisces full moon means sun and moon are exactly 7 houses apart which is known as Purnima and new moon means Amavasya means sun and moon are together conjunct in one zodiac sign what basically new moon represents new moon represents new beginnings and full moon represents completion of something new moon starts a cycle and for 15 days it goes on and then when full moon comes it completes and then from full moon to new moon it is again coming down okay it is reducing the number the magnitude something is ending when the time of full moon to new moon comes it shows something is ending and when it goes from new moon to the full moon it is known as starting of something because the moon is just visible when it's a new moon it's amavasya then i mean after the amavasya so now fifth there is the full moon in the sign of pisces that means sun is in virgo with mercury and moon will be in the sign of pisces what does it mean that when there was the new moon when sun and moon were in virgo last month in september then what happened there were new beginnings in our life related to traits of virgo which means i have met many people saying me in the last 10 days that they have made proper schedules and they have listed things properly on when to do what proper planning virgo is the sign of planning virgo is the sign of disputes debates and virgo is also the sign of implementation implementation is more of capricorn but virgo also has that component that means for the last 10 days people had been influenced by the sign of virgo very much because sun and moon were placed there that means now when the moon was in virgo it started the detailed process of like a virgin because virgo is the sign of the virgin and then coming 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 it went into pisces which means it will be in the sign of pisces on fifth and there the full moon will commence which means whatever plans we made of implementation we will see whether we are able to work on that or not by 5th of october it will happen and then what and then we will realize whether we have to continue this or we have to change this because then the next phase is starting it is approaching new moon again but this time the new moon is not in virgo this time the new moon will be in libra it is in 21st october roughly that that time after 15 days so that means now the full moon when sun and moon will exactly be apart the moon will be in pisces what is pisces pisces energy is opposite to virgo virgo is a very constricted very confined very narrow sign where we want to make things very nitpicky about details but pisces is a very broad minded sign it gives us the overall picture the bird's eye view that means whatever plans we made in the last 10 days of implementation or changes regarding to health or eating eating habits or taking up of some new activity or rather let me say taking up of some new activity which we, we were already doing but we were not doing it on a regularized basis now for maybe from 10 days we are we are doing it on a regular basis or at least we are trying to do because the uh, new moon was in virgo now when the full moon comes to pisces the pisces energy and the virgo energy will be harmonizing which means that now on 5th of october nearby that time we will come to see that whatever we tried to achieve was it successful or not 
and then again when from 5th to 21st it enters it goes into the phase of uh, the new moon in Libra again we will be either continuing them or we will change them okay so now wherever Virgo and Pisces is falling for you those areas will become very important <laughs> because for every different ascendant these signs will be falling in different areas and then after fifth what is happening the reverse phase will start means the moon will go near the sun again and then on 17th sun is entering Libra Mercury, Mercury will also enter Libra by then and then it is conjoined Jupiter so now what Jupiter Mercury Sun three are combined in the sign of Libra so in the next half of the month wherever Libra is falling in your horoscope as per your ascendant that sign that house will become the most prominent house because especially because of Jupiter and Sun now Jupiter I already made a video that how Jupiter's transit and Saturn's dual tran double transit will affect you but here now it is not only Jupiter it is Sun Mercury also and especially it is Sun because Sun represents the power powerhouse it represents the light it represents where we focus for that month when I say month from 15th of a month to the 15th of the other month so now Jupiter was already in Libra from September of 12th and now Sun is also entering that and along with Mercury Mercury is entering a bit before that means the sign Libra becomes very prominent now what is Libra Libra is balance Libra is negotiations deals contracts marriage relationships other people meeting new people meeting other people meeting meeting people on a place outside of your home because seventh house is the original sign which uh, the, the Libra energy is there in the seventh house which means what Libra energy is all about meeting other people yes because Libra shows the traits of air sign and air sign is all about communication that means the areas of communication and social networking will tremendously improve will tremendously increase will tremendously magnify because Jupiter Sun both will be in the sign of Libra and also Libra whenever Jupiter and Sun come in conjunction then people feel very positive because Sun is the natural significator of the self and Jupiter is the significator of optimism growth expansion so when Jupiter Sun come in conjunction in transit once in a year it will happen for one month then the traits of positivity inside everybody in this entire world will increase depending on the dasha which you are running but in general I am saying for those 30 days from October 15 to November 15 people will feel a sense of optimism now why I am saying till 15 November not because Sun is there in Libra but Saturn on 25th October is also moving into the sign of Sagittarius which is what the original ninth house it is the divine sattvic sign of Dharma of optimism hope of it is the house of God and Gurus so now Saturn from last three years was in the sign of Scorpio and Scorpio is what Scorpio is the turbulent sign where every planet is forced to go and dig deep into the secrets into karma because the Gandanta point also lies here Gandanta point means the end of a water sign and the beginning of a fire sign the end of Scorpio where the Jeshta Nakshatra is there and the beginning of Sagittarius where Mula Nakshatra is there is a very strong Gandanta and here Saturn is going on now because it is in the last degrees of Scorpio 
and Scorpio is all about fears, it is all about anxieties, it is about insecurity, where the mind feels I am going to lose that paranoid fear of losing something. Why? Because moon gets debilitated here. Moon gets debilitated in the sign of Scorpio, which means that any planet which is in Scorpio or which when transit Scorpio will face these psychological issues, which means our actions, our deeds, our karma had undergone a lot of cleaning, a lot of charging <laughs> and a lot of introspection. Many people have changed jobs, careers. And when I say many, it is many, 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 many. Because Saturn has showed us that, look, my dear sir, if you cannot stay in this job, I will not let you stay here. And then people are forced to go inside, introspect and see that Saturn represents karma. What should I do in life? Should I be doing this? If somebody is not happy in their job, then they might have left it. And now Saturn is moving into the sign of Sagittarius by end of October. So then what will happen? All the fear and the paranoid situations that we were facing in our work, in our karma, in our career. Now all those things will end. When I say end, it does not mean that there will be no problems. It simply means that we will have a divine sense of optimism and positivity. And we will want to do things in a much better way because when we when Saturn will enter Sagittarius there will be a sense of optimism and a sense of belief because see originally Scorpio is 12th from Sagittarius and 12th house is loss and 9th house is the house of faith faith on God and faith on anything alright so when Scorpio energy becomes very prominent then it is seen that the person cannot put faith on anything he cannot trust anybody, he or she. Because the faith has been lost in the darkness. Because when you are roaming in darkness, you don't trust anybody. But the moment you enter light, Sagittarius, you feel as if, okay, now things are going to improve. I have seen somebody, the guru comes and says that, okay, come with me, I will take you. And then you realize that the world is not that bad. So by end of October, and I would say by the end of November, these things will improve. And especially the working class, because Saturn represents the working class. They will feel very positive. They will feel like having faith in their higher authority, who is the sun. Because now Saturn will enter the sign of Sagittarius. And they will be very duty-bound, very structured towards their karma. And people in general. And especially if somebody is a Capricorn or an Aquarius Ascendant, this will be even more prominent in their lives. Because Saturn, your Lagna Lord, was roaming in the dark places of Scorpio. Because Scorpio energy has a lot of poison because the Scorpion's sting is there. And because of that, we have to undergo a lot of karmic consequences. All right, And because of that, we at times felt... My God, what is going on? Many Capricorn and Aquarius ascendants, I know. But now great news. They, sun, uh, Saturn is moving into the sign of Sagittarius. And if you want more information, you can check my video on double transit of Jupiter Saturn. And now, Mars and Venus are also conjunct in the sign of Leo. For another week or so, they will be conjunct. Maybe 10 days, another 10 days. What is the sign of Leo? Leo is a sign of royalty, kingship, authority, power, post, position, recognition, name, fame. Leaders are represented by the sign Leo. And now what is Venus? Venus is our ability to love. In a man's chart it represents the wife and in a wife, in a lady's chart it represents the husband or boyfriend or whatever you call it. These days there can be homosexuals and then Venus will represent the same sex. Now, when Venus comes into Leo, what happens? People feel very much inspired to become more and more creative because the nakshatras within Leo are the next two, the last two are Uttar Falguni and Purva Falguni. Purva Falguni starts in between and the end part 
of Leo has Uttar Falguni Nakshatra and these are extremely creative nakshatras. That means that when Venus transits Leo, people feel extremely creative. People feel like doing something new in their relationships. People feel a sense of duty and commitment. The only problem with Venus and Leo is there can be too much ego within the relationship. In the quest of taking charge of things, which is Leo, you might end up hurting people. That's the only predicament of a Venus in Leo. And Mars is also in Leo. <laughs> and when Mars is in Leo, what it shows that Mars is that soldier within us who wants to just go and get things. And when Mars goes into Leo, Mars becomes very disciplined to hear the word of the senior because Leo is the king and Mars is the uh, he's the warrior. He is the commander in chief, as in Sanskrit you say Senapati. And when these two planets, Mars Venus, come together, it's like putting water and fire together in a fiery sign. <laughs> so there you will notice that whenever Mars and Venus come together, they create very passionate romantic love relationships but the only problem is they are very much short-lived because mars and venus romance is like the romance of a royal lady and a soldier they come from two different backgrounds so it is very likely that that relationship doesn't last for very long okay which means whenever mars venus come together there can be very passionate relationships too much focus on sexuality and then by the time they will separate then again things will go, go back to normal and if Mars and Venus are ruling planets like the first house or the seventh house in your charts then you might meet somebody now by with whom you can get into a relationship so and so it will depend on so many other factors and by the mid of this month they are moving into the sign of Virgo, alright. And Venus gets debilitated here in the sign of Virgo because Virgo is that very narrow path. And Venus gets exalted in Pisces, which means Pisces is the sign of forgiveness. It is a sign of embracing and Virgo is the sign of criticizing and not willing to compromise. And Virgo is the sign which always finds faults. And Pisces says, forgive everybody. Let them be the way they are, okay. But... Venus in Virgo, you will notice that. And now, because Mars will also be there for some time. For some time means they will be conjunct for some time and then Venus will go ahead. And then by that what will happen? Now for some days Venus and Mars will be nearer. So you can expect these things to happen more and more within relationships. And when Venus goes into Virgo with Mars, then it will become very much aggressive and impulsive towards finding falls with the opposite sex or with our partners so we need to take caution that we do not get into unnecessary quarrels unnecessary fights otherwise things can go haywire with displacement and till the end of this month they will both stay in the sign of Virgo and Venus will be way ahead leaving Mars behind so we need to take care in matters of love relationships that we be practical at the same time we do not hurt the other person and we do not try to superimpose our thoughts our belief our aspirations and our goals and our desires on the other person because then they will feel hurted and libra will become very prominent because mercury jupiter and sun will both all three be in libra and Mercury likes Libra very much because it is the sign of balance and marketing. And Mercury represents marketing. Which means that there will be tremendous avenues and progress of commerce. And Jupiter and Mercury are coming in conjunction. Which means people will feel very much optimistic about their ideas and putting the ideas into place. Because Mercury represents your ideas, your thought process, your way of communication. And Sun also will brighten it and Jupiter will expand which means that if there are 
avenues related to work or business or money which we were planning to invest in then we may go ahead and do investment there in those areas and this period is also very good for education because mercury and jupiter will be conjunct with with the sun which means that if there are areas where we are not applying our mind applying our intelligence applying our practical thought process then this is the time to apply and we can do this with the help of other people because libra is a debilitation sign for sun which simply means that when sun enters libra we feel the need to get validation from other people we feel the need to go and meet out people and go and ask them am i doing right am i doing wrong and especially areas of commerce will bloom because of these three planets in the sign of libra and then 21st we are having the new moon again in the sign of libra and when 21st comes sun moon mercury jupiter all four planets will be lined up in the sign of libra that means nearby that time the sign of libra becomes very prominent and by that time mars venus will also enter virgo so to sum up the conversation the sign of virgo and libra is very prominent for this coming month that means for example if you are aries ascendant your 6th house and 7th house will become very prominent all right because these influences are happening in your 6th house and in your 7th house for for example if you are a libra ascendant then for you it will be happening in the 12th house and in the lagna itself because libra is your first house if you are a capricorn ascendant these placements will affect your 9th house and your 10th house so i have given example for three ascendants and i will leave the onus to the other people that they can find out whichever houses does libra and virgo fall and depending on those houses we have to see that those are the areas where we can achieve great things in life for example if somebody is a aries ascendant then there can be new beginnings nearby that 21st new beginnings in matters of relationships because this is happening in the 7th house and if somebody is a libra ascendant then the new moon is happening in your first house the lagna which means you can get some name and fame due to some reason <laughs> because sun is also transiting your first house jupiter is already there and if somebody is a capricorn ascendant then you can have new job opportunities because libra falls in your 10th house so if you are planning to apply for promotion raise or appraisal this is the time bang on apply similarly if you are a aquarius ascendant then the 8th house and the 9th house becomes very prominent that means great time to take to spiritual practices especially aquarius because four planets are lined up jupiter is already there in your 9th house beautiful time mind blowing time <laughs> All right so that is it from my side if you like this video then click the thumbs up and subscribe to it to my channel and please check the other videos okay and if you have any questions queries or comments then let me know in the comment sections until next time libra and virgo these two signs bye bye see you